I guess we can you go. You are live. We are Ouch. live. I just accidentally scratched a scab off of my wrist. Oh, that was... Um... What a way to start the show. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> are you bloody? I'm going to put some lotion on that. What's up, everybody? How's it? How like are you all doing? Sorry. Um, as always, can you let us know in the chat if you can see us and hear us okay? We're gonna be like we're we're gonna be trying to upgrade our going live systems in the future because we're going live again a lot now. Yeah. So um, we need to upgrade some stuff, but hopefully it looks and sounds okay. The chat's not moving. Weird. Oh, oh there it goes. Okay. Maybe it hasn't kept up yet. Yeah, just let us know if <laughs> let us know if you can see us and hear us okay. This should be a pretty good show. I've I've, I've like written out some stuff about. Wholesale, eBay, and Amazon wholesale. And I burnt my tongue just now Ellie on a cup of tea that I made too hot. Uh, and then so. ripped off a scab. Oh, babe. You okay? It's just like a series of unfortunate sound. events. <laughs> Sounds and looks good. Awesome. Before we start the show, um, let us know where you're watching from. Put in the chat like, hey, guys, we're from here or I'm from here. My dad's in the chat. What? My dad's Bob. 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 Most common name in America, Robert. Bob. Oh. Bob. Are you? Uh, how do you know that's your dad? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw Sweet Pea, I was like, Han, I looked at the name and I was like, it's my dad. Hello, dad. I have a cool dad. Hi, You've probably What's seen him on? in a video of ours. Colorado. Colorado. Lincoln, Nebraska. Cool. Iraq. Wow. That's oh. Amazing. That's awesome. Beautiful South Jersey Shore, Fort Joy Lauderdale. Z. New Hampshire. Every time I think of New Jersey, I have a lot of family from New Jersey. I'm just like cabbage. Whenever they're joking, they're <laughs> yeah. saying cabbage. And I was like, why do they keep saying cabbage? And Ryan's like, they're saying garbage. And I was like, oh, cabbage. yeah, you're right. I didn't realize. <laughs> Greece. Oh, my gosh. Very cool. Can we go to Greece? Yeah, I, I really want to go to Greece. Cool. Well, yes. hi, everybody. Appreciate you all being here. Um, keep in mind that we go live every Monday at 8 p.m. So we try to. We try to. Um, so Tejas. If you ever want to catch a live show, you can come catch a live show. We also say Tejas because my brother lived Tejas. in Texas for a long time, and he always said Tejas. So then I got into the habit of saying Tejas. True. Best food ever. I love Gosh. Texas. I love Texas. Everything. We almost moved to Texas a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We considered it. But it's too expensive in Austin, so we will not be moving to Texas. It's getting pretty and we expensive have here, too. Everywhere, now. yeah. Oh, yeah. We have such a good property. We got lucky yeah. when we bought our property in the Plant City area. So Shout out hey. to Kyle, who just hit a $1,000 90-day total. Congratulations. You should be nice. very proud of yourself. Shout out to one of our favorite people in the world, Sean Oyer. What's what up, up fam? Oh, Portland. Oh, it's a beautiful place. So the theme of today's live show is it's all about wholesale, eBay and Amazon wholesale. So if you have questions surrounding wholesale, um, keep them keep them ready to go. I'm going to go through like the, some of the stuff that I've written out, but keep them ready to go and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you have. Ryan will do his best to answer all the questions you have. Well, you're really good at certain. I'm wholesale not. No, too. wholesale is not my thing at all. Like yeah. You've done it all. Well, I mean, keep in mind too, like. A lot of people ask us, like, does all of our reselling income come from going to yard sales and going to thrift stores? And YouTube. People ask us and if YouTube. all of our income yeah. comes from YouTube. <laughs> so you broke it down in a video percentage wise. I've broken it down before in a couple videos, mm -hmm. uh, but the answer is is no, definitely not. Like about half of our total business income comes from wholesale, whether that's us buying wholesale and then selling those items individually on Amazon or on eBay. Um, or on Instagram, places like that, as well as buying in large, larger wholesale and then breaking that wholesale up into smaller wholesale mm -hmm. lots and selling it off to our, you know, our mentoring group or sometimes to the public. But wholesale makes up about 50% of our total business revenue. The other 50% comes from the other things that we do. All the other things. That, and you yeah. know about all of them, mm -hmm. right? They, there's nothing that's secret. No, nope. You know about it all. We're a pretty open book. <laughs> well, we want to be because we want you to understand our finances truly and not lie about them. Because if we're not transparent, we don't share with you those numbers, then you don't know. Right. Yeah. It's just, it just feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is wholesale? Because even that is a question that we get all the time. I actually had someone in one of our videos, um, someone said, you're not actually doing wholesale 
wholesale is only buying from the manufacturer and then selling in a retail store. So like Walmart, Walmart buys wholesale from the manufacturer of the product and then sells it in their retail store. The fact of the matter is that that is not, that's not the only wholesale out there. Buying something like um, a bunch of the same used item or like today we, we went through 392 pairs of used shoes. That is wholesale. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's still considered wholesale. So wholesale is, is um, goods, buying or selling goods in large quantities that the end result is selling it uh, one at a time, right? So buying large in bulk, but it doesn't have to be only new goods. It can definitely apply to used goods. So, and selling something, buy, or selling something for resale is basically what wholesale is. So if I have a bunch of these LaCroix, right? And Callie goes... I'm gonna That's drink them mine, all. sir. Callie goes, I want to buy a thousand of those. Same exact can. I'm like, okay, I have a thousand of them. Instead of a dollar a can, I'll sell them to you for 50 cents a can so that you can then turn around and sell them for a dollar a can. That's wholesale. That applies to any product, new or used. That's what wholesale is, right? Does that make sense? Did I explain that okay? Hopefully I think that so. makes sense. Yeah. Hey, neighbor. I feel like wholesale could mean <clears throat> all kinds of things though, right? Yeah, but the, that makes sense. the the essence of wholesale is buying large amounts of something. In our job, that's what wholesale yes, in, means. Yes, in resale, exactly. Yeah. Yes, Martin. Yeah. Anytime any government tells us about aliens, I'm excited. <laughs> yes, <laughs> tell us more. Be honest. I feel uh, like the declassified documents, like but left 90% of the documents classified. <laughs> or maybe we think that the government knows more than they cool. know about aliens, but yeah. Cool. Thank you. So Pretty definition cool. of wholesale entry one of four, the sale of commodities in quantity, usually for resale as by a retail merchant. Um, I think if you look at that's entry one of four, there's a few different definitions of wholesale. I think I wrote one of them down, um, which is I think it was entry four, which was to sell something in quantity, usually for resale. So all it is is selling something in quantity, a bunch of something intended for the purpose of resale. Now that we know what wholesale is. Now we got it. <laughs> so, and this is a good, let me show this quick. Dr. Scores Down Ooh. says, if you want to sell large expensive items, wholesale is probably not the way to go. And I would, I would tend to agree with that. Large expensive items, like there's a reason why most people don't buy houses wholesale. <laughs> not that it's not a thing because some, you know, sometimes you can buy 10, 20 houses at a time and then that's considered like wholesale houses, right? But yes, most of the time it's smaller, less expensive items that are wholesaled out. Oh no. Ooh. Oh Is my you gosh. okay though? Oh my gosh. So thoughts and prayers to Allison, everybody. Yeah, she we actually had this discussion about like getting up on the ladder and doing certain things and decided that we shouldn't because it's not worth the risk like the of, gutters yeah like right. i shouldn't have gotten up there because i definitely almost fell oh off. you went up there yeah last time yeah. i went up the first time I, I tried to clean out the gutters i i put the ladder up the wrong way and i didn't flip flops and it was like teetering over it was While not a I good time standing watching that in. was so stressful <laughs> i was not okay with that okay so there's 205 people watching so i'm going to keep going with my list and again guys if you have questions around wholesale um, just keep them for a little bit and we will get around to answer them. But the next thing is when to know you're ready to start buying in bulk or start buying wholesale. So the first thing I wrote down is when you've gained experience and knowledge as a reseller and you have the capital available. So those things work hand in hand. We have people all the time who come to us and they're like, hey, I have $10,000, but I've never resold before. What can I buy wholesale to start? And we say, don't, don't do it. <laughs> Start by learning Surprise. learning, and gaining experience before you jump into wholesale. Yeah. We don't want anyone to <clears throat> think that we're discourag discouraging you from jumping into something, but not that. You can lose yourself. Yes. Like don't completely lose everything. Much. So exactly. it's not worth the risk if you're not educated enough. So gain the knowledge and gain the experience mm -hmm. before you start seeking out wholesale. And then I put in there too, um, make sure you have the right amount of capital available. So there's, there's no set amount to, you know, start buying wholesale, but I put $5,000 of free capital just dedicated to buying in bulk or buying wholesale. That's typically what we would recommend. So work your way up, start setting some money aside for bulk buys. And then once you have around $5,000, 
ready, free and clear, that's when you can go, okay, maybe I should start buying wholesale now, or maybe I should start looking into buying wholesale. See, look, Allison was cleaning her gutters. And after we did it last time, I decided we are just paying people from yeah. the stay forward because it's not worth, well, it's more expensive to go to the ER <clears throat> than to pay yeah. someone to clean the gutters. And then you have to live with the damages <laughs> and deal with them. Oh, wait, wait, where are you? <laughs> my dad. <laughs> There's my dad. Shame on you. I think your dad knows that I don't do manual labor things. Yeah. Well, I also got up on the ladder <clears throat> oh, and true, it's true. like 20 feet high with the blower. And I was like, I'm just going to oh, yeah. blow out the bad. gutters. And I wasn't expecting it to be so powerful. And I like kind of fell back, but I caught myself and Ryan was holding the ladder. So wait, you were on the ladder and the holding blower. the blower. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> yeah, I did that. Oh so my God. not doing it again. Now if I know. If I was there, I would have <laughs> suggested against that. Uh, Allison, and I'm Kelly. glad Casino you're okay. Pops. Kelly yes. is the voice yes. of reason. In <laughs> I this, will not do that. In this <laughs> thruple, Kelly is the voice of reason. <laughs> you she see, Chris. Right. Chris said something really nice. Thank you, Chris. Oh yeah, cheers to everybody watching Thank tonight. You, by the Chris. way. Cheers with my Dragon Ball Z wine glass. Cheers my, with Callie's lacrosse. Croix. And I just want to point this out, guys. Look at this. Oh, wait. Ah, sorry. There's nothing wrong with hiring a professional. 100% agree. And you have to do the risk first reward benefit. Not yeah. lazy, but like obviously, you know. So. There's certain things that just make sense, like electrical, you know, plumbing, if you don't know what you're doing. Flooding, fires. Finances like a CPA, Laundry, CPA. cleaning. You got to research the people too. Make sure that they're legit and they're not yeah. going to do a poor job. Obviously, goes without saying, guys. But just remember. And, <laughs> and what about like time over? Mm -hmm. You know, actually you doing it because yeah. sometimes it's better to instead of taking five hours to learn something and then do it, it's better to just pay someone to right. Do it for you. Especially if it's like a one-time thing. But then if it comes to something else where you know you can be doing it many, many times, like how to put an anchor in drywall. And if you know you're going to hang 50 things up in your house, yeah, you should learn how to do that. True. And you can't have an electric fog usually from that. So just <laughs> remember, guys, and same goes with business. Like we tell people, yeah. outsource the things you hate so you can spend more time making money and scaling. It helps yep. you scale. So the, there are easy ways to outsource, like having some right. of your listings for you is the easiest way to outsource. In fact, one of the only reasons why we were able to get into wholesale to begin with was because we had Callie. Callie was able to take over the shipping and the listing individual items, which freed us up to go and talk to different people and to go find wholesale connections. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, so once you have, once you're established, right, once you have your $5,000 and you have your, um, your, your knowledge and your experience, you're ready to start buying wholesale. The next thing I want to mention is that you, you, you need to approach these wholesalers and buying in wholesale. You need to approach it in a professional way. If it's just like, I'm a guy who flips stuff from thrift stores and I go to a wholesaler or I, even to a liquidator and I go, Hey, I want to buy wholesale. They're probably going to be like, okay, no worries. What's your business name? Give me your resale certificate. What's your, you know, what's your budget? Do you have a website? Stuff like that. So you have to make sure that you have stuff in place so that when you approach these people, you sound like a professional and you don't just get turned away at the beginning. Right? So things that I suggest, um, register a business, if you're getting into wholesale, you probably should own a, a business, have a registered business at that point, an LLC mm -hmm. in your state. Um, and then you don't have to pay uh, sales tax in states where that's applicable on goods that you purchase from an auction. Even Costco will take a the resale resale certificate. certificate. Yeah. So so once you you can actually get that as a sole proprietor, but once you have a business established an LLC, then you also have to register for your resale certificate, and that's when you can get that tax discount. Like but yeah, saying. we should remind people like as a sole proprietor, you can get that resale certificate, and then when you go to places like Costco, when we bought all of those slippers that one time, yeah. we used our we could have used a resale certificate that was before we realized we could use yeah. it at Costco, which was ignorant on our part, and we learned from um, a viewer. Yeah. So yeah, the more way. you know, the more you know, we're always so, learning too. We're not perfect. Register a business and LLC when you're ready for wholesale, um, open bank accounts in your business's name. Again, either as a sole proprietor doing business as get a DBA or better yet, get an LLC and open actual business accounts. Mm -hmm. um, get your resale certificate, develop a simple website. I, th I think it's something that a lot of people overlook, but I think it's something that is, it makes you just look that much more professional in the marketplace. You can go on like, wix.com or weebly.com or even yeah. godaddy has easy websites you can build get a domain name it's like nine dollars get some hosting open a website so you can be like hey i'm ryan with ryan's wholesale buying 
<laughs> here's my business card. Go to my website and check me out. Um, sometimes if you're, if you're like re reaching out to distributors, actual companies to, to buy products from them, they are going to, uh, check you, check you out. So they will reference check and they will check look at your, out. look at your website. So it's good to have that in place. Um, so treat make it sure like you look going into the sure. shark tank and be prepared. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So what else did I put on there? Oh, and then lastly, if you want to, the over and above step would be to create a social media presence for your mm. business as well. So get a Facebook business page. You can get on LinkedIn. You can get an Instagram if you want to, but just create some sort of a, of a social media presence for your business. Cool. Yeah. Let me answer this one really quick. Yeah. What's your opinion on Alibaba? I think Alibaba is a cool place to source for um, like merch for private label, like t maybe t-shirts or like giveaways and stuff like that. I do not think it's a good place to source for, wholesale um to like fba sent to amazon stuff like that it takes it's very difficult to private label something from alibaba it takes a lot of capital um takes a lot of time sometimes you're going to miss out on trends doing it that way so is it possible yeah it's definitely possible but most of the people saying i made a million dollars buying this one item on alibaba and flipping it on amazon fba most of that is just like a scam to get you to buy the course a so lot of the don't fall into that yeah, and I feel like a lot of the successful Amazon sellers that are buying off of Alibaba, they're paying extra to get the stuff shipped to them really fast when they're at the beginning of a trend. They'll like catch on to yeah. something and they buy it, but they don't like keep ordering more and more and more because they know that the trend's going to be over in X amount of time. So they'll just get like bulk of something. They'll pay extra to have it shipped really fast. They get it listed really fast and they'll like add, you know, some type of value to it like whenever glass straws are popular they might have added rubber tips to their listing you know they they do a little extra yeah. and it might cost a little extra but if you can get that sales rank really really low and if they're cle they're clever what they're doing is clever they're not just buying the same exact thing and making the same exact listing they're adding value to it and they're like loading their listings up so it's different it is and that's doing. also that's also not our thing that's not we our don't thing. do that yes so we wouldn't be the people to learn that from right but we don't want to say you can't no because people definitely can't i just didn't want them to think oh, that gotcha. we were saying that because yeah. we know a lot of successful people who have done that sure but they were very clever and they were right yeah. at the beginning of the trend and they yeah. had a good yeah. contact and it got to them well, super fast and they didn't like keep ordering too much yeah. hoping that the trend would stay because the trend kept yeah. changing and they kept changing their listing and making it better so. I would put that in the same boat as drop shipping. I think 1% of drop shippers actually are doing it legitimately and are actually making good money mm -hmm. as a drop shipper. Most people doing it are, um, they're all fighting for the same type of items. They're all looking at the same websites to drop ship from their accounts are getting suspended off of websites like eBay that don't allow drop shippers. Yeah. And most sure. people get burned trying to get into that. To me, it's better just to start by actually doing the dirty work. And like, you know, trying to flip stuff from thrift stores right. or trying to go to garage sales and actually physically having the item in your hand. And we are saying so most, we're not it. saying 100%. No. I just want to be clear because there are people who have done it successfully. Yeah. But most can't. <laughs> so what do you guys think the minimum feedback score looks like before you go wholesale as an experience level? Hmm. Good question. Um, I don't know. I've never thought about know. it that way. I've never thought about Me it that way. I think it would depend because you could buy a hundred of one thing and not learn about a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. That's a tough one. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I would say maybe like a 500 positive feedback score on eBay before you start buying wholesale would be good. I'm trying to think like how many items that that's uh -huh. sold. So if you're getting positive feedback on 30% of the items that you sell, or just feedback in general on 30%. That means that if you had 500 feedback, you would have sold 1500 items. So yeah, that's about right. Sell 1500 items that you should be able to learn enough about that to, yeah. That's a lot of items. Yeah, well, that's like, it depends on how, how many items you're selling a day. That could be six months, True. that could be a year. So on a time frame thing, I would say take a year to build up your knowledge and your finances and your expertise before you start wholesale. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's so funny. I give that example all the time, Russell. 
honestly, the last good trending item from China were fidget spinners. The rest have been trash. What's funny about that is I know I know a lot of people who made literally hundreds of thousands of dollars selling fidget spinners, catching the trend and, and making a bunch of money doing it. And I know even more people who got stuck with 30, 40 grand worth of fidget spinners in their garage because they missed the trend. So it, again, it goes both ways. Some people did really well with it because they were ahead of the gate and some people failed at it. So it's tough. And every trend is going to be like that. There will be people yeah. ahead of the trend that catch it right in the beginning and then people that are too slow to the finish line. And yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Let me keep going with this wholesale thing. Do it. So the question, obviously, that everybody wants to know is where to source wholesale from. That's like, once you're ready, where do you actually start buying wholesale from? Um, the first thing that, I'll, that I want to stress is that real resellers, legitimate resellers are not going to give you their wholesale connections. It takes us years and literally hundreds of thousands of dollars to build the wholesale connections that we have. No one's going to be like, hey, here's my guy. Go buy from him. It's just not going to happen. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the effort to actually go and make the connections and do it. But here's some tips. Liquidation companies, really good. Uh, we tell people to stay away from um, store returns to begin with, but liquidation companies can be good. When I say liquidation companies, I'm talking about actual companies that do liquidation for big retail stores like Home Depot and Walmart and Target and places like that. I'm not talking about liquidation.com. I'm not talking about bulk.com. Can you make money buying from places like that? Sure. But it's like hit or miss 50, 50, you know, some people make money on lots. Some people don't make money on lots. So I never suggest people go to liquidation.com and buy liquidation lots from them. Cause you're just gambling. You're, you're basically gambling. Yeah. Unless you can get like the actual manifest and then you know exactly what's coming. But even then I've had people, buy a lot with a manifest and then it comes and everything's like broken. So you just have to be careful. Look, Dennis is watching us from Denmark. It's 2 20 AM. Oh. Whoa. Thanks for staying awake. Whoa. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I feel so special. Another good place is auctions. So if you can actually go to a physical auction, um, there's auction companies that liquidate estates. There's auction companies that do, uh, what else? Like seizure, seizure auctions, like, um, police seizure type auctions. They're not like an actual physical seizure. Yeah, I couldn't think of the police word. <laughs> yeah. Police there's, seizure, that's what he was trying to say. There's like um, government liquidation auctions where they take all their old equipment and liquidate it through an auction house. That's a pretty good one. Those are interesting. Yeah. We've been to a few of those <laughs> and we we're just like, well, what is happening right now? It was kind of crazy. But some auctions can be good. And Either way, going to auctions and meeting other resellers at the auction, just doing that, networking with people at the auction, that can be really good too. It's <clears throat> very good. Yeah. Everybody Meet sells people. different stuff and has different connections. Yes. So other avenues of finding wholesale, other resellers. So like us, for example, we sell wholesale to other resellers sometimes. So there's resources out there networking with people on Instagram, networking in, in other reseller Facebook groups. You can meet other people. Just be careful, obviously, about what you're buying, but you can definitely network with other people in those groups and find um, re other reseller inventory. Yeah. And then uh, trade shows. Trade shows can be a really good one. If you're an Amazon seller, you can go and actually meet distributors. And trade shows are cool because it's all the companies all in one place. So you can go from booth to booth to booth to booth, go and here's my card. Can I get your wholesale list? Here's my card. Can I Probably get your wholesale list? so many because of Corona last year. Sure. So I can't imagine this year. Everything changed. There's a few going Just on this year, though. Yeah. yeah. Atlanta has a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then brand distributors would be like top tier. So brand distributors is me going, okay, I want to sell, I want to sell Legos, but I want to buy from a distributor that gets their product directly from Lego. So I'm going, or who make, does Lego make Lego? <laughs> I don't know who actually manufactures I don't know who Lego. owns Lego. Yeah. But I'm going, I'm going to the distributor that gets them in bulk. Right. And then they're breaking me off a piece. Basically, they're going, OK, we're going to we're Kit Kat. We're going to treat you the same way that we treat Walmart, just at a, you know, at a, a less margin. But we're going to treat you the same way. And you're buying, you know, you're getting legitimate product exactly or from the manufacturer through the distributor. That takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. You have to be super legitimate and you have to have a very big budget. So typically for stuff like that, like a legitimate brand like that, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars per order. Lego so. is made by the Lego group. 
Okay. There it is. I'll Google it. So in-house? And then lastly, eBay. We've actually bought lots off of eBay to resell on eBay. And we've bought lots off eBay to resell on Amazon. Sometimes you can source directly off of places like eBay. And if you're ungated on Amazon, you can source, you can go and buy like, if they have a hundred available, you could buy all hundred and send them straight to FBA and make money that way. So that's another way to source. Wreck it Ralph always with the jokes. So funny. <laughs> They're not jokes. Uh, okay. So um, the, the last part of this is I just have some facts about wholesale, which I'll share with you guys, but for now we'll just answer whatever questions you have around it. Oh, and, the and then we'll talk about, and facts. then we'll talk about facts. some facts. facts. I want to break this up into little segments so I'm not boring you guys too Wait, much. You but... really want a Kit Kat or something. <laughs> uh, Kit Kat. Here's a question. Have you heard about Wholesale Ninjas? Um, such a good name. It's a good name. That's so good name. I haven't heard about, I haven't used them personally. So I don't want to give like a, I don't want to give a review because I've never heard of them personally. Yeah. That's... All I can say is do your research yourself. Go look at reviews around them. And um, yeah, you can, you can do it that way. I, I haven't seen great results from other people using them but i don't want to knock something till i personally tried it right yeah and cherokee maiden how long have you been reselling for because i know you've been with us for a long time and i feel like you've had a lot of experience since even before 81 we years started 81 years nice, nice. <laughs> probably born in 81 right nope Definitely. 81 years of reselling my guess is born <laughs> that's what the number is how to sell wholesale thrift shoes on ebay um, so it's the same thing, right? You would just need to find someone who wholesales used shoes. So like the shoes that we processed today at our warehouse, we bought almost 400 pairs of shoes. Those didn't come from a thrift store, but they came from a wholesaler that sells two thrift stores, if that makes sense. You yeah. have to be careful too, whenever you're buying from someone, uh, we always do like a test run first and then hope that the relationship stays good because sometimes with others that we've worked with in the past, we get like a good sample box and then the next couple of boxes were good. And then all of a sudden the quality declines mm. and then you have issues. You gotta stay on and top then, of them. Yeah. You have to stay on top yeah. of them and the people will just turn around and burn you instead of keeping the relationship. Turn it's very burn. strange. I, yeah, but we've been very careful because of that. Everyone is gated on Amazon now. Everyone starts gated. We started gated. Everyone, you know, everyone starts the same way. You can only sell certain things. Books is a good way to start because everybody's ungated on books. Um, but eventually, the more you sell on Amazon, the more categories open up for you, and you'll get you'll get um, automatically ungated on certain things. And then other things like other certain brands, you have to work with a distributor and get an actual purchase agreement from the distributor around that brand. Then you send that to Amazon, and then yeah. you can get ungated in that brand. It takes work. Amazon's a really tough one to scale up or get ungated in certain brands, but it is worth it to put the effort into it. Dan Pack, Yay. just wanted to say thanks for your vids. I started a small vintage clothing category in my store because of your channel and ended up turning my $3 original investment into over $1,000 in wow. two months. Love that. That's awesome. Yeah, vintage is still pretty crazy high right now. Are you Canadian? Ah, it's the emphasis, South African emphasis. Them teas. It's, it's the wrong and the South African the wrong syllable. Wrong syllable. No, I'm not Canadian. 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 I am from South Africa originally. Is it blurry? Is the camera blurry, guys? Is that better? I think it's because Ali's like two inches behind our heads. Is that better? Uh, so I need to stay here. Is that better for you guys? <laughs> Is it? It's Is hard it? to tell. That looks fine. Like it looks I said, good we're on this, but yeah. Not on mine. We're gonna be upgrading our streaming devices pretty soon <clears throat> and that means in five months also the dogs right now are <laughs> sleeping and they're very cute i wish you guys could see them they're so cute. quietly over here. mikey resale yeah. says i've been selling on amazon for five months and already hit 75k in sales wow. and my r is 50 percent to 100 percent. that's awesome man very nice. very good that's high, amazing high roi for amazon so good job congratulations there. good job When's a good time to start a store? Somebody was asking about that. And I know eBay you kind of have like, yeah, for well, eBay. So there's like your thing. There's like, there's lower levels of eBay stores now that don't cost very much money. So you can start like a, a starter store for, what's it like five bucks a month or something I like think that? So. You get shipping supplies starter for a starter basic. store. No, no, you don't. No, I think you have to have a basic store above for shipping supplies. Um, 
But yeah, I, I usually tell people if you're listing more than 50 items a month, it makes sense to have a store. If not, you can just get the free listings that they put out every once in a while and do Looks that. It's like I'm but... wearing a Santa hat. It's always <laughs> it does. There we go. If I just stay right here. <laughs> Christmas is just around the corner. There we go. Yes. <laughs> QuickBooks. That's a good question. Do you recommend QuickBooks for bookkeeping? Yeah, QuickBooks is a really good one. Um, GoDaddy Online Bookkeeping is another good one, but most CPAs like you to use QuickBooks. So it is a good one though. Yeah, for small businesses, QuickBooks is great. Free listings is 250 for free with no store. Yeah, there's other perks of having a store. I mean, if you're listing 250 items a month, you should definitely have a store for sure. Yeah. And the shipping supplies are awesome. Like we get... Tape is so expensive, right? Like just tape alone and getting the free tape is amazing because we need so much tape. We're and that saved us right a lot. Yeah, we're stocked yeah, up. Yeah, we're stocked up. eBay gives a lot of free shipping supplies, which is incredible. So some Happy more some more facts about wholesale. Also, 301 people watching right now, which is really cool. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate you. That's awesome. Um, some more facts about wholesale. So this one, a lot of people forget about when they start getting into wholesale and it kind of surprises them. It shouldn't surprise you, but it does kind of surprise some people. So your margins on wholesale are going to be, usually you're going to be a lot less than thrifting or buying from a garage or garage sales. So, um, like who was talking about Mikey. So Mikey resales was talking about, let me show that quick. Mikey says, um, I learned how to do RA from my dad because he sold on eBay for years. So Mikey's R a uh, retail arbitrage, retail arbitrage, his margin, he said is 50 to hundred percent on Amazon. That's awesome. But that's going to retail stores and buying items one at a time, or, you know, finding a pocket of something at a store and buying them all, which is awesome. Nothing wrong with that at all. But if Mikey said, I only want to get into wholesale, I want to start getting into wholesale. If he got into wholesale and expected to still have those same margins, he would be, he would be disappointed because it's usually not going to happen. Typical margins with wholesale, good margins, 20 to 30%. You're making, you're, you're doing well, right? Um, so it's, it's a volume and turnover game. So it's not how much can I make off of one item. Uh, instead, it's, it's looking at the big picture of things, right? So the example that I gave is instead of looking at it like I'm paying $20 for an item and only making a $5 profit on that one item, your mindset changes to... I'm paying $20 a unit for a thousand units at a gross profit of $5 per unit, which is $5,000. So instead of looking at it as one item, you're looking at it as one buy. So it's not making $5 on one item. It's making $5,000 on one buy, right? So your margin is a lot less with wholesale. Um, yeah. So like Mikey said, it would drop to 30%. 30% would be good. That would be good for sure. If you're spending, if you're doing wholesale, if you're doing wholesale really well and you're spending a million dollars to make 30% or make $300,000, that's great. That's it, really good. That's really good. But it takes a million dollars worth of spend to gross 30% profit, if that makes sense. And that's really good. That's really good. Most companies out there don't make a 30% profit. Right. If you're spending a million dollars, remember you have a very high overhead. So that gross does get quite cut into yeah so just i want to remind people in case you were thinking like oh my god i get three hundred thousand in the bank it's that's not necessarily how that right. works and then another thing is um storage space that's another thing that people forget to think about storage space is super important um if you're doing amazon fba it's not as important you don't you know you're sending this stuff to the amazon warehouse but you still have storage fees with amazon fba so you want to make sure you're buying items that sell fast through amazon um and then if you're not doing that, if you're doing wholesale on eBay and you're actually holding on to the items, you have to make sure that you have the space available. True. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention about wholesale, specifically about liquidations, is if you're buying return liquidations, you're going to have to put in a lot of work to test the items out to make sure that they're functioning. That's why we say if you when you first start getting into liquidation buying, stay away from store returns because it's it's too much effort. To, you know, to put into it. It's the same reason why we don't buy storage units because it's a lot of work. You got to test everything and make sure it's all working. And a lot of the time stuff's broken. So yeah, but exactly. Can be great. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you have to look at how much your time is worth too. I agree. 
So that's what I have to say about wholesale. Wow. Now, whatever. Now we have 25 minutes left to yeah. just talk about everything else. <laughs> Allie's like, it's my time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one more eBay question. How many items should be promoted on eBay percentage? So for us, it's based off of competition, not how many items we promote. But if there is competition in that category, then we promote it. So I would say we're promoting typically around 60% of the items that we list. So we promote a lot of our items on eBay, but not everything, not everything. If there's a high demand for something and low competition, then you don't need to promote it. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, yes. Mm. Inventory systems are great. <laughs> very, very yeah. good. So you can yes. find stuff. You don't ship out the wrong things. Yeah. If you're a very disorganized person, reselling is a lot more difficult. True. It is more difficult. Cause it's get a, get a partner unnatural. who's good at organizing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you go back like 15 minutes in this video, I told you where to find stuff <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> anywhere. Really? Wholesale also has its perks. End of the year, you can move money into volume instead of profit. And then after taxes back to capital. Also, you can have write-offs and dump. If something isn't selling you recoup 100% agree. Yeah. We, we did that last year as well. So 100% agree. If there's, in their picture yeah that's big fun nice. <laughs> yeah that's such a funny picture i <laughs> love it it's fun that we can kind of see some of the people's faces now i know True. it makes it feels a bit more personal for us and from our end have you sold a lot of new shoes on ebay would it go through authentication i think if it's over i think it's a price range right if it's over a hundred dollars okay. it goes through authentication Is it 100 or 150 150 i'm not sure mm -hmm. we don't sell a lot of new shoes on ebay now <clears throat> but even used ones go through authentication. We sold a used pair that went through authentication. Yes, Chris online says, how do you ship to Amazon FBA? Um, I have I have a couple Amazon FBA videos on YouTube. They're old. I need to update them, um, but they're still relevant. You can still go see how to ship stuff. But Amazon has rates through UPS and through FedEx, and they're super cheap, super, super cheap. So. I think we shipped like a 60 pound box to Am an Amazon warehouse for like five bucks one time. <laughs> and it depends too. There you go. Mikey resale Thank says you. 150 for new shoes. Nice. Oh, it's right. I'll Google it too. Very cool. Um, what is an ideal profit per item on eBay? If you're trying to make a living selling on eBay. That's a loaded question. That's the most loaded mm -hmm. question. I would not have clicked on that because it's so loaded. <laughs> uh, Where really... do you live? How many people do you live with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is your what is your living? What is your living? But yeah. if you go off of like average, which let's let's I don't know what average is anymore. I have no idea <laughs> what anything is anymore. Let's Things go off changed. of really good. Let's go off of fifty two thousand dollars a year, thousand dollars a week, which is great, right? Um, if you want to do Solid, that, clean number. you could sell one item for a thousand dollars profit a week, or you could sell twenty items for fifty dollars profit a week. No, two hundred items for fifty dollars. <laughs> I was like twenty items. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> trying to math in my head is not a thing. Oh no, I can that's do right. Twenty longer. items for fifty. No, I'm it really, is. It's a thousand. I can't. I don't even try that's anymore. Right. So it, it, it's all relative. I would say typically um, we tell people to go after items that you can get at least $20 net profit out of. So after your cost of goods, after your shipping expenses, after your eBay fees, if you can actually clear 20 bucks per item that you're buying, that's really good. It's a, it's a good uh, gauge to go for. Also, that's like a Derek's hard part questions. for me is remembering that there's all those other fees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you find something and you're like, oh, it sold for this much. I can make that much because it only costs this much. But then you're not thinking about the eBay fees and how much it's going to cost to ship it. An easy way to think about it is it's going to cost at least with shipping and fees, it's going to cost around 25%. So if if you can sell something for $100, all you have to do is go 100 times 0.25 and your fees are going to be 25 bucks. So you can do that on anything. I could math that one. Yeah. Like $75 profit. Well, like minus your cost of goods, too. That's what I meant. <laughs> nice. Derek asked a good question. It's slightly up. Where is Derek? I know Ryan's answer. It's Chick-fil-A. Where is he? Um, Slightly up. I more? got it. I got yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Kelly. Kelly got it. 
Oh, that's a good question. So a what's a fine fast, fast food? food? That was my question because if it's just you go to the register, you order, and it has to have a drive through. I agree with that. It has to have a drive through. Yeah. Yes. Does Zico's have a drive through? Yeah. But um, I, what about a fast food chain? Because that's not that's like a Florida thing, I think. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. trying to think. Okay, so a chain? Mm. Chang, Chang, Chang. Uh, Zaxby's has the best salads, I thinking so I, I like would Zaxby's go with too. Zaxby's. But Ryan's favorite is, is Chick-fil-A. I would go with a restaurant that I can get grilled chicken on a salad nice. with. Oh, That's nice. what I would pick. Yeah, I do love me That's some Chick-fil-A. Chick Chick-fil-A. I like Zaxby's too, though. I love I like chicken. What I would do. Zaxby's like has the, the rest of your life Chick -fil -A. and only that restaurant. You could order off the whole menu, though. You can order off the whole menu. Ooh, Panera? Is Panera they, considered fast food? Some they have a drive through sometimes. Because then I would pick Zico's. Well, I would, I would <laughs> probably pick Panera. That broccoli cheddar soup. Mm, you can get sandwiches, too. Panera would be a great option. Question That's, for Callie. Who's that? Who's Dot? <laughs> well, to question, then. <laughs> nice. Raisin canes. We don't have that. Oh, it's oh, almost yeah. an interesting question. It's Where's right Tom? under. All right, let me answer yeah. Cherokee Maiden's first. I've been given so much stuff to sell that it's become an overwhelming trying to sort it all. I would suggest uh, selling some of it in bulk on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, good call. Yeah. To yeah. other resellers. To other like resellers. That idea. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's better just to clear it out, let other people deal with it, and focus on the stuff that's more expensive. Sometimes if you get too overwhelmed, you become dysfunctional. So just remember where your limits are and what's damaging your ability oh, to doing your work effectively oh, and then eliminate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Callie. I'm sorry That's for okay. stepping on your shoes. Callie wanted to Why did you step one? on her shoes? I don't know. I'm not literally wearing shoes. <laughs> Would you like to read that question? It's a good question. Better to go to estate sales first day, last day, or both? Both. All of the above. I prefer both. <laughs> well you want to no. see what's available and then if it's too much you can go back on the last day and see if it's still there and yeah. discount it and it depends on the estate sale because some of them true. way overprice everything literally everything That's they'll true. look up every single item on ebay and they'll even like tape the ebay thing to it and then other estate sales will miss certain things often so it just depends on who's running the estate sale also but both you can benefit from both I like going to first day estate sales where there's not that many people. Which is never. Because we're not the, <laughs> we're not we're not the type of people to like get there three hours before the estate sale and opens and someone. then fight for stuff. Like it's not worth it for us to do we that. We watch two grown adults fight over an Xbox and all of the games it was at an estate sale. And this is America. So many yeah. people were watching and they, they were just like know. just dumbfounded and shocked that these adults were acting this it was way. Not good. It was embarrassing. I felt very disappointed. I don't know if they were buying for personal or for resale, but it was awful and it really was distasteful and I wanted to leave because True. of it. Yeah. The most beginner way to the most beginner friendly way to start selling on Amazon. In my opinion, it would be books, scanning books, go to thrift stores, go to library sales. Sometimes every six months, the, the local libraries will do sales on their stuff. Um, and just download the Amazon seller app and scan books. Look for ones that are, look for ones that have a sales rank of 2 million or less. That's what I would say. And then put your labels on and send those into FBA. That would be how I would start if I was to say that's the way to start. Cases. Kelly has a really good English accent. Nine out of ten. Oh wow! I've been Case watching a England. lot of um, Below Deck, and a lot of the different <laughs> crew members are from all different places. We have so. friends that were addicted to Love Island. They watched every oh, single yeah. episode. Oof. They tried showing it to us, and I was just like, "It's not for me." <laughs> Can't. Kelly, would you like to answer that question? Well, we don't have umbrella lights, but we have box lights. That's how I was going to answer that question. come with diffusers that don't you can... Don't use umbrella lights. <laughs> yeah, don't use umbrella lights. They're... But if you already have the umbrella lights, maybe you can put, put a light a sheet behind. Over it. Put a sheet over it, yeah. like a really thin white sheet, and that should help to diffuse the light or something. Yeah. Callie went to school for videography? Film and video production. Film and video yeah. production. Like 12 she... years ago now, and none of that's relevant. That's not what? true. You well, do you direct all the time. Yeah, he filmed some videos. It just is, everything's Our newer though. Videos. Like uh, the cameras mm. we learned on were like the massive, big, bulky things. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
But you know what like certain things heavy mean, like settings. studio lights that, like, right. we wouldn't use. Yeah. But you can read the settings on the camera and understand them. Yeah. At See, I, st I still say two million. Two million? More, one million is great. Obviously, it's going to sell faster, but I still say two million. I got no problem buying books that are two million or less. Two million? Uh, but yeah, those soft boxes, the soft boxes on Amazon are very good. And then if you want to go crazy, you can get like ring LED light? panel lights or ring lights. Ring lights are good too. That's what we're using right now is a little ring light. Yeah. A ringy light. Where's all your questions? Oh, there's a personal question. Any tattoos any of you have that you kind of sort of have regrets about? No regrets. No I only have two tattoos and they're both enormous. I don't, the only one that I would say that I might have some sort of a regret, regret about is I have the little Gemini thing here. But only because I wish I could have done something different that went more into oh Cali Cam, Cali Cam, Cali Cam. Yeah, so since my ge the Gemini symbol was here before all the rest of this, so I feel like I could have done something cooler, more exciting, more exciting. and interesting. But you but, don't dislike it. It's no. just you, it's a big space. You could have done something yeah crazy. Yeah, there. yeah, I got exactly. you. I'm gonna yeah. cover this thing up. Like, I don't regret. I just have my. A uh, half sleeve here, but nothing on the inside, and then my side piece. Which... I just want more ink. Yeah, I do want more ink. Have I ever really shown her big side tattoo? No, I haven't. No. Really? There's, There's one picture on Amazon of us at the videos. beach where you can see. On Amazon? Or, sorry, there's one picture on Instagram. I'm going to say <laughs> Wow, I'm selling pictures of myself <laughs> on Amazon. Yeah, that's what pays the bills. On OnlyFans? That's, that no, Amazon. Not anymore. You got it wrong. It's actually no. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so there is one picture of my side piece on Instagram. Allie, on did you ever look up Ellie Berlin? If so, do you think she looks like oh, you? Oh, did I look her up? Look no, her up. I don't recall. Show me a picture. Because, let's see. All right, Ellie. E L L I. B E R, oh, literally like Berlin. Oh, I've cool. seen her before. Uh... Images at certain angles, yes, I can definitely see at certain angles because we both have dark hair and fair skin. But I bet maybe side you view. shave the side of your head. To yeah, look like maybe her. I don't know. She kind of looks maybe. like Predator. <laughs> she has a really. I think she has a better bone structure than me. Locks. But wow, I didn't know we could buy alleys on Amazon, right? Just buy an alley. You don't want. I'm expensive. <laughs> you have to feed me all the time. Mm. Maybe in this picture. Oh, you can't see it. I don't oh. want to mess up the focus the of the camera. I Hi, all show. from Geelong. Good day. That's in Australia. Isn't that one like a team name or something? Or is that a Geelong. place that the team belongs to? They have Maybe a footy sometimes. team. Oh, yeah, Maybe for sure. sometimes. Uh, Leonard, what do you make? the most money on Amazon or eBay for us, we make more money on eBay, but that's because that's our focus. Our focus is more eBay oriented than Amazon oriented. If we put more focus into Amazon, we could make more money on Amazon and Amazon, especially through FBA fulfilled by Amazon. Amazon is a much easier model to scale eBay. You need space to scale up. You need, eventually you need a warehouse to, you know, keep all your inventory Amazon is a much easier thing to scale. I know people who go just on the road with like a big U-Haul truck and they just do retail arbitrage and like collect all their stuff and then send it into Amazon. Yeah. They don't have a warehouse. They do that, you know, every couple months and they make great money doing that. It's a preference. Yeah. It's truly a preference. We don't like, we don't like to focus on Amazon because it feels like more of a job. We did it and we yeah. did both and we just really, it wasn't our thing. And I don't think we could have sustained that because we didn't enjoy it so i yeah. think that it wouldn't have lasted the way ebay has lasted yes. for us but we're not just saying ebay right so like um macari depop etsy um grailed poshmark grailed all of those also i Bit would stitch. group into the Thanks, yes please. into the ebay realm you know what i mean mm. i need to get mochi soon i like this question do you share your eBay store on social media? What do you advise against it? Why? Um, we didn't because we were scared at the beginning to share our eBay store on social media. But our eBay store, our public eBay store, has been on social media for years now. 
and it hasn't been an issue. Shall I post the link? Yeah, go for it. It's called the Hip Lion on eBay. That's where most of like our thrift finds go, our um, our garage sale finds, auction finds. The only time that I would say to hide your eBay store, don't put it on social media, is for items where you're you're buying wholesale, and you don't mm. want to you don't want people to find out exactly what wholesale you're buying. So that's when we have a separate eBay store where we can put our wholesale stuff that we just don't want to be public. True. Yeah. Yeah. Should I get mochi now or wait? And she's sleep four more minutes. Wait. Five minutes, only five minutes, the doggos. Can't have 10 minute doggos. Five minutes. Well, it'd be nine okay, minutes though. because it's 8.51. So <laughs> I can map that. <laughs> um, how can I buy wholesale from you guys? Like shirts or shoes? So stuff like vintage shirts, we have a website called vtgroots.com. Um, that one is open to the public. We do drops every couple months on that. And then... Wholesale like shoes, we only sell to our, our VIP students. So you would have to become a student. Yeah. We just <clears> can't <throat> put out more than that. And so we got we gave them first dibs. Yeah, we don't get enough enough stuff. Um I mean if enough people ask for mochi now, I'll bring her. <laughs> Ryan's like, I swear. do you want to see the dogs? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You would have to ask eBay that. I haven't even checked if they're still doing that, but it's pretty crazy if they are charging sales tax on um we heard some on yeah taxes some crazy story about Our, ebay yeah. mischarging fees and overcharging people or double charging people for shipping so you need to check yeah. through monthly and make sure mm -hmm. everything looks good guys mm -hmm. don't just assume it's it's an old antiquated everything so mistakes happen glitches happen whether they're unintentional or intentional cool. right like you never know with large companies but i'm gonna just say i think it's unintentional mistakes happen and just make sure you're covering yourself and you research that and you look at it and see that you're not being overcharged that's a cool advertising thing get a bunch of qr codes that goes directly to their store and slap them on everything oh I like that idea. Yeah, has good. it been working for you since you started doing that that's awesome yeah, that's a good question i mean i know i like i like to just scan qr codes that i see <laughs> Probably does work. Like, what is this? What is this? I got so annoyed whenever we had to use your phones for menus. QR codes for menus. I can't stand that. Well, the amount of people that didn't know how to do it too was fun. I'm to watch. probably yes. That's I was the issue. Well, but we all were just, in the beginning. Probably. What do you mean? I like you take a, of it? a list of all of my options physically. Like, <sighs> yep, no, nope, not for me. <laughs> Vintage dolphin coming up on Vintage Lion. <laughs> oh, nice. I, love, I like oh, that name. The, hip line. the sales tax gets processed with the entire payment. So they pass the fee onto the sellers with a brick and mortar. And we're charged for the entire amount process, not just the sale. I guess that makes sense. Because you're. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> if it's. Oh, no, that does make sense. So the credit card company charges the fee on the sales tax as well at the time of sale. If that's the case, then that's why eBay is doing it that way. That does make sense. So mm -hmm. if it's $55 plus $5 sales tax, the credit card company is charging their fee on $60, not on $55. Right. Yeah. Which sucks. But I guess if that's the industry standard, maybe that's why they're doing it that way. Industry standards will always benefit the large corporations and never the little people. True. That's just how it's always been. And I don't know if it's going to change. We're getting a mochi, mochi, mochi chant. Mochi, 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 mochi. <laughs> it's only one minute. <laughs> All right, Governor. We're excited for Vegas. We're excited to see everybody go into that. Um, that's called the... Reseller Remix. Boss Reseller Boss Remix? Reseller yeah, remix. Boss Reseller Remix. If you guys want to go to that, I think there's still tickets left. So. And we're going to be there. Oof. Oh, okay, Bow Dog. Oh, you do smell nice. This is a French bulldog. Her name is Mochi. She has a hard time breathing in certain positions. Oh my gosh. She is allergic to grass a little bit. She gets a bath once a week. She's and a I have to clean her wrinkles with my face cleaner. She's a good girl. Zero. This is Mochi. Come here. That is Mochi. Hello. Come here. <laughs> 
Zero doesn't want to get up. Colin, Zero's passed out. At the at the end of the video where I talk about how to make $100,000 on eBay, I gave four tips on how to increase your daily sales. Go watch the end of that video and start doing that stuff. It should help you, should help you out. Can you guys hear Mochi? She's loud. Of course. <laughs> Adorable. 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 Zero, we love on. all animals here. And now I like cats. Oh, I, before, I never had any type of a relationship with a cat, so I Zero. had no feelings towards Zero. cats. But now I really super like chat. cats. Oh, yeah, super chat. I'm a very, I'm very much a dog person. I like snuggle. But I mean, if Here's a dog doesn't want to hang out with me, I'm sad. You know, if a cat doesn't want to hang out with me, I expect. Denise and Ron travels. Thanks for the five dollar super chat. Do you guys have any wholesale lots available? We're in Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati. <laughs> Cincinnati. Um, and her friends with the Cincinnati picker. That's awesome. Oh my God. I want to meet him. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Uh, like Pangea. <laughs> Cincinnati. We only do vintage t shirt lots to like the general public. Um, to, like the shoe lots and stuff go to our students. Mm. But if you're into vintage, you can get a lot sometimes. Mm. <laughs> Shirts and things. And thanks. Thanks again for the five bucks. Tell Cincinnati picker we said mm. hi. Commonwealth Pickers. Oh, look at that one. Cat you can have. I finally got rid of those five cats. <laughs> Do the four, four things. things. They work. Whoa. We should make a video called Do the Four Things. And it can be Mochi wearing a monocle and a top hat. How do dogs count on their fingers? One, two. They count with three. their toes. They've got paws, not fingers. They have fingers. Our friends call <laughs> these their little toe beans. Toe Cutest beans. name ever for them. That's awesome, Nicole. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. I met a guy at the thrift store today. He came up to me and he was like, hey, man, I've made $7,000 in extra, extra money this year just by going to thrift stores on my lunch break. I was like, $7,000 is a nice raise. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Just going to thrift stores on his lunch yeah. break. It was Congratulations. Cool. He was really tall, so I was looking at him like that. Uh, you had to look up to him. <laughs> yes, sir. We have some He's tall nice friends. Guy. Our tallest friend is 6'5". He's very tall. He can reach the, the top the of the kitchen. Dude? No, it's Chris. He's Max almost, isn't that tall. Almost as tall as me. Yeah, he can reach the top of a kitchen cabinet, like above it. He can reach it. It's amazing. That's crazy. My shortiness over here, and Callie's even shorter than me. Callie, how, Favorite shows tell how tall you is? I'm 5'2". 5'2 crew. I wear I'm a size five 6 five. shoe. A little feet. Favorite shows or movies you've watched streaming Ooh. lately? Steve? His parents told me to watch Ma. Oh, I need to watch that still. It's Ma. a psychological thriller, and it was crazy. Would I like Ma. it? Yes. Oh, okay, I like a psychological. I don't like horror or scary. It's not really horror. It's just gory. like... Just watch it. Nice. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. I like anything sci-fi. If anyone has an excellent sci-fi recommendation, even if it's older, I'll watch it. Um, like Altered Carbon and Westworld. I mean, oh, love true. them. Love them so much. Those are, are, I still say, arguably, Westworld is the best show that has ever been put out on TV. Like plot-wise, writing-wise. There's, I have no complaints. It's so complicated. I don't think that I could catch any mistakes because... I can barely keep up with it. So <laughs> I want to go back and rewatch Westworld. And I feel like it's one of those shows you can watch every like three Ma. years. And Ma. it's just as good as the first time, if not better, when you watch it. Do you guys want to hear a crazy story for all 300 of you that stayed to the end of today's video? Oh, tell oh, a crazy dear. story. So, well, you guys know this story. Oh. <laughs> Last night, we watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, right? Oh, Great movie. This super is good such movie. a crazy story, guys. And then this morning, Callie texted me a picture of an address, and the name on the address is David, David Batista. Batista. Like, legit, like, it is someone from his household or him. Yeah, <laughs> we've we've had, like, similar celebrity names come through before, and we don't know, but this time, we did a little stalker action. <laughs> we found out that it was actually him or his, his kids or something, but... Yeah, we sold something to David Batista, which is so cool. After watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 the night before. Yeah, well, one and two. One, one last week and then two yeah. last night. Take this. Right, last night? Take this. <laughs> Yesterday. I thought it was cool. There was wigglies. Super cool. You can just sit right. Dave, Dave Batista. Bautista. Yeah. Put a U in there. Batista. Bautista. It was amazing. Bautista. It always feels really cool when that happens. Right. I want to see him wear that T-shirt that's old. 
I couldn't fit into that t-shirt. <laughs> Allie probably couldn't. Uh, oh, was oh, it a tiny shirt? It was a small Prince t-shirt. Uh, maybe it was a It gift. was an XL, but it fit small. Ben had maybe to model it, it because it was small. Ben is small. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy. I've had I had a I posted it on Instagram and a few people messaged me and they were like, I've run into him in St. Pete and he was a really nice guy. He seems super nice. Yeah. So I'm really glad to hear that. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you be nice, right? I guess if it would should never meet your down. heroes. Mm. We're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Not assuming we're, we're heroes, hero. obviously. <laughs> Um, I think we're good. That seems like an hour, right? 59, 55, 56. There we go. Not one. Traveler's and best sci-fi ever. Bye. <laughs> oh, 901. Okay, I'll look it up. Thanks. Bye, guys. We love you. We'll see you. Uh, we'll have a new video out Friday. Really good video, so stay tuned for that one. Um, hit the thumbs up button on this one, on this live chat, if you don't mind. And... We love you guys. Leave Thank you so an much actual for being comment here. in the actual comments so we can read those and we can reply. True. If we didn't answer your question, yeah, definitely leave a comment in the actual video. But we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. You guys are awesome. Bye. Love you. Keep it cool.